What does this sign mean? Adverse camber. Steep hill downwards. Uneven road. Steep hill upwards. This sign gives you an early warning that the road ahead will slope downhill. Prepare to alter your speed and gear. Looking at the sign from left to right will show you whether the road slopes uphill or downhill. Why is it bad technique to coast when driving downhill? The fuel consumption will increase. The engine will overheat. The tyres will wear more quickly. The vehicle will gain speed. Coasting is when you allow the vehicle to free wheel in neutral or with the clutch pedal depressed. Speed will increase as you lose the benefits of engine braking and have less control. You shouldn't coast, especially when approaching hazards such as junctions or bends and when traveling downhill. When should you flash your headlights at other road users? When showing that you're giving way? When showing that you're about to turn? When telling them that you have right of way? When letting them know that you're there? You should only flash your headlights to warn others of your presence. Don't use them to greet others, show impatience, or give priority to other road users, because they could misunderstand your signal. You wish to turn right ahead. Why should you take up the correct position in good time? To allow other drivers to pull out in front of you? To give a better view into the road that you're joining? To help other road users know what you intend to do? To allow drivers to pass you on the right? If you wish to turn right into a side road, take up your position in good time. Move to the center of the road when it's safe to do so. This will allow vehicles to pass you on the left. Early planning will show other traffic what you intend to do. You're approaching a zebra crossing. Pedestrians are waiting to cross. What should you do? Give way to the elderly and infirm only. Slow down and prepare to stop. Use your headlights to indicate they can cross. Wave at them to cross the road. As you approach a zebra crossing, look for pedestrians waiting to cross. Where you can see them, slow down and prepare to stop. Be especially careful of children and older people, who may have difficulty judging when it's safe to cross. When will anti-lock brakes take effect? When you don't brake quickly enough. When the wheels are about to lock. When you haven't seen a hazard ahead. When you're speeding on a slippery road surface. If your car is fitted with anti-lock brakes, they'll only activate when they sense that the wheels are about to lock. By preventing the wheels from locking, you'll be able to steer to avoid the hazard, while maximum braking is also applied. Your vehicle catches fire while driving through a tunnel. It's still drivable. What should you do? Leave it where it is, with the engine running. Pull up 
then walk to an emergency telephone. Park it away from the carriageway. Drive it out of the tunnel if you can do so. If it's possible, and you can do so without causing further danger, it may be safer to drive a vehicle that's on fire out of a tunnel. The greatest danger in a tunnel fire is smoke and suffocation. What should you do when you're joining a motorway? Use the hard shoulder. Stop at the end of the acceleration lane. Slow to a stop before joining the motorway. Give way to traffic already on the motorway. You should give way to traffic already on the motorway. Where possible, traffic may move over to let you in, but don't force your way into the traffic stream. Traffic could be traveling at high speed, so try to match your speed to filter in without affecting the traffic flow. Where should you never overtake a cyclist? Just before you turn left on a left-hand bend, on a one-way street, on a dual carriageway. If you want to turn left and there's a cyclist in front of you, hold back. Wait until the cyclist has passed the junction and then turn left behind them. Don't try to intimidate them by driving too closely. Where's the safest place to park your vehicle at night? In a garage. On a busy road. In a quiet car park. Near a red route. If you have a garage, use it. Your vehicle is less likely to be a victim of car crime if it's in a garage. Also, in winter, the windows will be kept free from ice and snow. You find that you need glasses to read vehicle number plates at the required distance. When must you wear them? Only in bad weather conditions. At all times when driving. Only when you think it's necessary. Only in bad light or at night time. Have your eyesight tested before you start your practical training. Then, throughout your driving life, have checks periodically, as your vision may change. What must you do when entering roadworks where a temporary speed limit is displayed? Obey the speed limit. Obey the limit, but only during rush hour. Ignore the displayed limit. Use your own judgment. The limit is only advisory. Where there are extra hazards, such as at roadworks, it's often necessary to slow traffic down by imposing a lower speed limit. These speed limits aren't advisory. They must be obeyed. A horse rider is in the left-hand lane, approaching a roundabout. Where should you expect the rider to go? In any direction. To the right. To the left. Straight ahead.
Horses and their riders move more slowly than other road users. They might not have time to cut across heavy traffic to take up a position in the right-hand lane. For this reason, a horse and rider may approach a roundabout in the left-hand lane, even though they're turning right. You're driving towards this level crossing. What would be the first warning of an approaching train? Both half barriers down. A steady amber light. One half barrier down. Twin flashing red lights. The steady amber light will be followed by twin flashing red lights that mean you must stop. An alarm will also sound to alert you to the fact that a train is approaching. What does this sign mean? Give way to oncoming vehicles. Approaching traffic passes you on both sides. Turn off at the next available junction. Pass either side to get to the same destination. These signs are often seen in one-way streets that have more than one lane. When you see this sign, use the route that's the most convenient and doesn't require a late change of direction. Some two-way roads are divided into three lanes. Why are these particularly dangerous? Traffic in both directions can use the middle lane to overtake. Traffic can travel faster in poor weather conditions. Traffic can overtake on the left. Traffic uses the middle lane for emergencies only. If you intend to overtake, you must consider that approaching traffic could be planning the same maneuver. When you've considered the situation and decided it's safe, indicate your intentions early. This will show the approaching traffic that you intend to pull out. At an incident, someone is suffering from severe burns. What should you do to help them? Apply lotions to the injury. Burst any blisters. Remove anything sticking to the burns. Douse the burns with clean, cool water. Your priority is to cool the burns with clean, cool water. Its coolness will help take the heat out of the burns and relieve the pain. Keep the wound doused for at least 10 minutes. If blisters appear, don't attempt to burst them, as this could lead to infection. What's the purpose of a catalytic converter? To reduce fuel consumption, to reduce the risk of fire, to reduce harmful exhaust gases, to reduce engine wear. Catalytic converters reduce a large percentage of harmful exhaust emissions. They work more efficiently when the engine has reached its normal working temperature. What does this sign mean? Change to the left lane. Leave at the next exit. Contraflow system. One-way street. If you use the right-hand lane in a contraflow system, you'll be traveling with no permanent barrier between you and the oncoming traffic. Observe speed limits and keep a good distance from the vehicle ahead. 
you're approaching a crossroads. The traffic lights have failed. What should you do? Brake and stop only for large vehicles. Brake sharply to a stop before looking. Be prepared to brake sharply to a stop. Be prepared to stop for any traffic. When approaching a junction where the traffic lights have failed, you should proceed with caution. Treat the situation as an unmarked junction and be prepared to stop. You're unsure what a slow-moving motorcyclist ahead of you is going to do. What should you do? Pass on the left. Pass on the right. Stay behind. Move closer. When a motorcyclist is travelling slowly, it's likely that they're looking for a turning or entrance. Be patient and stay behind them in case they stop or change direction suddenly. What could you do to reduce the volume of traffic on the roads? Drive in a bus lane. Use a car with a smaller engine. Walk or cycle on short journeys. Travel by car at all times. Try not to use your car as a matter of routine. For shorter journeys, consider walking or cycling instead. This is much better for both you and the environment. You're carrying an 11-year-old child in the back seat of your car. They're under 1.35 meters, 4 feet 5 inches, tall. What must you make sure of? That they sit between two belted people that they can fasten their own seat belt, that a suitable child restraint is available, that they can see clearly out of the front window. As the driver, it's your responsibility to make sure that children are secure and safe in your vehicle. Make yourself familiar with the rules. In a few very exceptional cases when a child restraint isn't available, an adult seatbelt must be used. Which of these should you allow extra room when overtaking? Lorry? Tractor? Bicycle? Road sweeping vehicle? Don't pass cyclists too closely, as they may need to veer around a pothole or other obstacle, be buffeted by sidewind, be made unsteady by your vehicle. Always leave as much room as you would for a car, and don't cut in front of them. What does this sign tell you? No cycling. Cycle route ahead. Cycle parking only. End of cycle route. With people's concern today for the environment, cycle routes are being extended in our towns and cities. Respect the presence of cyclists on the road and give them plenty of room if you need to pass. What does the term blind spot mean? An area covered by your right-hand mirror. An area not covered by your headlights. An area covered by your left-hand mirror. An area not visible to the driver.
Modern vehicles provide the driver with a good view of both the road ahead and behind using well-positioned mirrors. However, the mirrors can't see every angle of the scene behind and to the sides of the vehicle. This is why it's essential that you know when and how to check your blind spots so that you're aware of any hidden hazards. You're on a motorway at night with other vehicles just ahead of you. Which lights should you have on? Front fog lights. Main beam headlights. Side lights only. Dipped headlights. If you're driving behind other traffic on the motorway at night, use dipped headlights. Main beam headlights will dazzle the other drivers. Your headlights dipped beam should fall short of the vehicle in front. You're driving a friend's children home from school. They're both under 14 years old. Who's responsible for making sure they wear a seatbelt or approved child restraint where required? An adult passenger. The children. You, the driver. Your friend. Passengers should always be secured and safe. Children should be encouraged to fasten their seatbelts or approved restraints themselves from an early age, so that it becomes a matter of routine. As the driver, you must check that they're fastened securely. It's your responsibility. What should you do immediately after joining a motorway? Try to overtake. Readjust your mirrors. Position your vehicle in the center lane. Keep in the left-hand lane. Stay in the left-hand lane long enough to get used to the higher speeds of motorway traffic before considering overtaking. You're about to overtake a slow-moving motorcyclist. Which one of these signs would make you take special care? In windy weather, watch out for motorcyclists and also cyclists, as they can be blown sideways into your path. When you pass them, leave plenty of room and check their position in your mirror before pulling back in. When you see a hazard ahead, you should use the mirrors. Why is this? Because you'll need to accelerate out of danger, to assess how your actions will affect following traffic, because you'll need to brake sharply to a stop, to check what's happening on the road ahead. You should be constantly scanning the road for clues about what's going to happen next. Check your mirrors regularly, particularly as soon as you spot a hazard. What's happening behind may affect your response to hazards ahead. You're on a motorway. What colour are the reflective studs on the left of the carriageway? Green, red, white, amber. Red studs are placed between the edge of the carriageway and the hard shoulder. Where slip roads leave or join the motorway, the studs are green. You park at night on a road with a 40 miles per hour speed limit. What should you do? Park facing the traffic. Park with parking lights on. 
Parked with dipped headlights on. Park near a street light. You must use parking lights when parking at night on a road or in a lay-by on a road with a speed limit greater than 30 miles per hour. You must also park in the direction of the traffic flow and not close to a junction. You're approaching roadworks on a motorway. What should you do? Speed up to clear the area quickly. Always use the hard shoulder. Obey all speed limits. Stay very close to the vehicle in front. Collisions often happen at roadworks. Be aware of the speed limits, slow down in good time, and keep your distance from the vehicle in front. What does this sign mean? Leave motorway at next exit. Lane for heavy and slow vehicles. All lorries use the hard shoulder. Rest area for lorries. Where there's a long, steep, uphill gradient on a motorway, a crawler lane may be provided. This helps the traffic to flow by diverting the slower heavy vehicles into a dedicated lane on the left. What type of emergency vehicle is fitted with a green flashing beacon? Fire engine. Road gritter. Ambulance. Doctor's car. A green flashing beacon on a vehicle means the driver or passenger is a doctor on an emergency call. Give way to them if it's safe to do so. Be aware that the vehicle may be travelling quickly or may stop in a hurry. You're at an incident. What could you do to help a casualty who's unconscious? Take photographs of the scene. Check that they're breathing normally. Move them to somewhere more comfortable. Splash their face with cool water. If a casualty is unconscious, you need to check that they're breathing normally. Look for chest movements. Look and listen for breathing. And feel for breath on your cheek. You're driving along this road. What should you be prepared to do? Sound your horn and continue. Slow down and give way. Report the driver to the police. Squeeze through the gap. Sometimes, large vehicles may need more space than other road users. If a vehicle needs more time and space to turn, be prepared to stop and wait. The left-hand pavement is closed due to street repairs. What should you do? Watch out for pedestrians walking in the road. Use your right-hand mirror more often. Speed up to get past the roadworks more quickly. Position close to the left-hand curb. Where street repairs have closed off pavements, proceed carefully and slowly, as pedestrians might have to walk in the road. You're driving along a wet road. How can you tell if your vehicle's tyres are losing their grip on the surface. The engine will stall. 
the steering will feel very heavy. The engine noise will increase. The steering will feel very light. If you drive at speed in very wet conditions, your steering may suddenly feel lighter than usual. This means that the tires have lifted off the surface of the road and are skating on the surface of the water. This is known as aquaplaning. Reduce speed, but don't brake until your steering returns to normal. What does this sign mean? Multi-exit roundabout. Risk of ice. Six roads converge. Place of historical interest. It will take up to 10 times longer to stop when it's icy. Where there's a risk of icy conditions, you need to be aware of this and take extra care. If you think the road may be icy, don't brake or steer harshly, as your tyres could lose their grip on the road. You're driving a vehicle that has anti-lock brakes. How should you apply the foot brake when you need to stop in an emergency? Slowly and gently. Slowly but firmly. Rapidly and gently. Rapidly and firmly. You may have to stop in an emergency due to a misjudgment by another driver or a hazard arising suddenly, such as a child running out into the road. If your vehicle has anti-lock brakes, you should apply the brakes immediately and keep them firmly applied until you stop. You're leaving your vehicle parked on a road and unattended. When may you leave the engine running? If you'll be parking for less than five minutes, if the battery keeps going flat, when parked in a 20 miles per hour zone, never if you're away from the vehicle. When you leave your vehicle parked on a road, switch off the engine and secure the vehicle. Make sure no valuables are visible. Shut all the windows, lock the vehicle, and set the alarm if the vehicle has one. Northern Ireland exempt. What does the Pass Plus scheme enable newly qualified drivers to do? Widen their driving experience. Supervise a learner driver. Increase their insurance premiums. Avoid mechanical breakdowns. The Pass Plus scheme was created for newly qualified drivers. It aims to widen their driving experience and improve basic skills. After passing the practical driving test, Additional professional training can be taken with an approved driving instructor, ADI. Some insurance companies also offer discounts to holders of a Pass Plus certificate. You're waiting at a Pelican Crossing. What does it mean when the red light changes to flashing amber? Wait for pedestrians on the crossing to clear. Move off immediately without any hesitation. Wait for the green light before moving off. Get ready and go when the continuous amber light shows. This light allows pedestrians already on the crossing to get to the other side in their own time, without being rushed. Don't rev your engine or start to move off 
while they're still crossing. Which of these signs means there's a double bend ahead? Triangular signs give you a warning of hazards ahead. They're there to give you time to prepare for the hazard. For example, by adjusting your speed. What must you do at this junction? Stop behind the line, then edge forward to see clearly. Stop beyond the line, at a point where you can see clearly. Stop only if there's traffic on the main road. Stop only if you're turning right. The stop sign has been put here because the view into the main road is poor. You must stop because it won't be possible to take proper observation while you're moving. What's the main benefit of driving a four-wheel drive vehicle? Improved grip on the road. Lower fuel consumption. Shorter stopping distances. Improved passenger comfort. By driving all four wheels, the vehicle has maximum grip on the road. This grip is especially helpful when traveling on slippery or uneven surfaces. However, having four-wheel drive doesn't replace the skills you need to drive safely. You're towing a small trailer on a busy three-lane motorway. What must you do if all the lanes are open? Not exceed 50 miles per hour. Not overtake. Have a stabilizer fitted. Use only the left hand and center lanes. The motorway regulations for towing a trailer state that you mustn't use the right hand lane of a three lane motorway unless directed to do so. For example, at roadworks or due to a lane closure. Exceed 60 miles per hour. You're about to drive home from holiday when you become ill. A doctor prescribes drugs that are likely to affect your driving. What should you do? Only drive if someone is with you. Avoid driving on motorways. Get someone else to drive. Never drive at more than 30 miles per hour. You shouldn't drive if you're taking medicine that could cause you to feel drowsy at the wheel. Ask someone else to drive, or, if that isn't possible, find another way to get home. 